Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Monday. That means we're brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products at Jordan Kitchens and Cassie Spazali back there on the ones and twos. It's Eclipse Day. It's National Championship Day. Spring football is about to wrap up. We got tons to talk about over the next two hours, so I hope your work week is off to a good start. We'll hear Brian Kelly sound here in 30 minutes. I'm uh, going to chat with Wilson Alexander about LSU football at the bottom of hour number two. I got to preview the national final tonight between Purdue and UConn. It is the heavyweight matchup that we thought we were going to get, and we have. John Calipari leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas. I think that is fascinating. I think it is fascinating for Arkansas. I think it's fascinating to watch what Kentucky does. I'll give some of my thoughts on that. I got to get Jordan's thoughts on Zion Williamson not playing back on Friday because his finger hurt. Uh, but then they got a big win yesterday, so we'll talk a little bit about that in our at the end of our number one. Unfortunately, um, we will start where I kind of thought we might be starting when I finished my show on Friday. And that is with Vanderbilt coming back and winning games two and three against LSU to claim the series meant that LSU dropped its first four series of Southeastern Conference play and now currently sits at three and nine in league games. Um, look, we'll start with with Saturday. You show up, you've got a game in your back pocket. LSU played well enough behind Luke Holman and Griffin Herring, got offense early, and won the game on Thursday uh, to take control of the series. Then you've got a split. But you understand that your ace is gone. Vanderbilt has pitched its number four starter, even though he throws 100. And you're going to have to deal with Bryce Cunningham and then Carter Holton in games two and three. But LSU got off to a really good start against Bryce Cunningham. It's another big, physical, veteran pitcher for Vanderbilt who throws in the mid-90s and has good command and throws good breaking stuff. And LSU held its own. Knocked him out of the game in the fifth inning. Ran up five earned runs against him. You had Tommy White hitting a big home run early. Ashton Larson got it on the mix. White hit another home run. And you're... In control of this game. It's four to two. But Gage Jump kind of did what he's done. And he was just okay. And that's kind of what he's been. And so he gives up two in the third, and he gives up another one in the fourth, and he gives up another one in the fifth. And he can't finish the sixth. And Vanderbilt scores again. And when his line is settled, it's five and a third, six hits, five runs, four of them were earned. He didn't walk anybody but he only struck out three guys. This guy that was dominant at times in the pre-conference, it just hasn't translated into any dominating stuff in conference play. He pitched a good game against Florida. He struck out eight that day, but he didn't work too deep into the game. He hasn't had a a seven-inning, one-run, eight-strikeout day through four league weekends, and I kind of thought he might be the guy, but he hasn't been. And then you run into the issue that, well, Herring's burned, so who do we go to to try to protect this lead? And you went to Thatcher Hurd, and he gave up a hit and a walk. You sat him down after 18 pitches, and you went to Ackenhausen, and he's your guy. And you've got a lead late, and he gives up the homer. And he's given up a homer in three consecutive league outings. And then you go to Helmers and Lore, and you got, you're down because they hit the two-run homer. You get an opportunity with a gift – When Milam hits the number and they make the throwing error and you've got first and third with the tying run at third base and one out and Milam hits into double play. And those are the situations where good teams more often than not capitalize and bad teams don't. And LSU didn't. Rolled right into a tailor-made two ball and Vandy slams the door behind Ethan McIlvain. So you, you find yourself once again in a position where you're facing a stud in the rubber game. You saw Jack Caglione two weeks ago. 
You saw Carter Holton on Saturday. And Holton did what he's done now for three years at Vanderbilt. Six innings, six hits, two earned runs, but 10 strikeouts didn't walk anybody. And LSU doesn't have anywhere to turn in the third game of a weekend, whether it's the first game against Arkansas or the last game against Florida or Mississippi State or Vanderbilt. They have nowhere to turn. They go to Javen Coleman. He gets rocked because when Javen Coleman pitches, more often than not, the other team hits the ball hard. Helmers, Cam Johnson, Christian Little, he threw Jaden Newt out there for his college debut. Micah Butnam. LSU, almost in my opinion, unfathomably runs out of pitching every weekend. My hand is directly raised here. I am maybe as guilty as anyone in hyping up the depth and the talent of this LSU pitching staff. You can go back and listen to the preview that Musso and I did on YouTube. Go listen to anything I said preseason. I thought they had maybe 12 guys that you could go to and really count on for big-time stuff and, and, and pressure outs. They have two. Two. And when Luke Holman and Griffin Herring pitch, LSU's pretty good. When everyone else pitches, they lose. You're talking about an Arkansas offense that was down towards the bottom of most statistics in the league. They crushed it all over Baum Walker for three days. You're talking about a Vanderbilt team that had not scored over four runs in its last eight games. That included three against Missouri, one against, I can't even remember, it was Belmont and like Lipscomb or something. Who was the other one? Valparaiso. Another illustrious program. They couldn't score four runs on anybody. <laughs> they could on LSU. Just absolutely bashed. 27 runs on 31 hits over the weekend. On Friday and Saturday, Vanderbilt hit 353 as a team. Couldn't score four on Valpo. Three days against Missouri pitching. Couldn't go over four. Belmont in the midweek. They get to the box. BP, baby. Batting practice. Bashing it off the scoreboard. Oppo homers. They get a lead. They're hitting and running, stealing bases. It's open season. And they're just, LSU has nowhere to turn. When you consider that the Holman Herring combo beat Florida and Vanderbilt, that's two of the 12 games you've played. In the other 10 SEC games, LSU is one and nine. This LSU team has one way to win a baseball game. One way. Holman starts, gets into the middle innings. Your offense scratches five or six early, and then Herring closes. Any other method to attempt to win a baseball game, they can't do it. Sometimes they hit. They don't pitch at that point. Sometimes they get some outs. Bats can't hit an ace. They have one way to to win a baseball game. And look, Jay talked about it after the game. He was asked, like, are, are you surprised that you don't have anywhere else to turn? And he said, he, he gave a little bit of a, a, a precursor to the answer, and then he was like, but yeah, I'm really surprised. And, and I said this back on Friday, and then Jay reiterated it on Saturday. And this is something Hanny talked about on the show at Live at Lunch right before us. It's something Musso talked about at Musso at the box. The guys talked about it this morning on Off the Bench, but it's it's very true, and it goes back to the fact they only have one way to win. Well, how about when you got a 9 nothing lead and you're ace on the mound, you put that game in a chokehold, you score more runs, you run rule them, or someone else on the bullpen comes out there and finishes the rest of that game, so Herring's ready to go behind jump. If you're going to win a weekend, or if you're going to huh, sweep a weekend, which is asking a lot, you're going to have to blow somebody out so that you don't have to use high leverage arms. At some point, you can do it in game one, you can do it in game three, but at some point, you got to dust somebody because they don't have enough arms to go high leverage guys on game one, high leverage guys game two, high leverage guys game three. They don't have that many. So when you've got a 9 nothing lead on Thursday... 
I don't even want Griffin Herring warming up. I want him in tennis shoes, chewing big league chew, and maybe sending a text message from the dugout. Like, I don't want him in that game, and they couldn't get it done. And it's not just the pitching. Like, the hitting is is as much to blame here as well, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, well, actually in the next segment. But my biggest takeaway from, from this entire situation is that LSU has two arms it can trust. You've lost the last five games Gavin Guidry's pitched in. Not his fault, but that's one of your high-leverage guys. The last five times he's taken the ball, you've lost that game. When Nate Ackenhausen pitches an SEC play, you're one and three. And the guys down the back end of the bullpen are the guys that you see in these game threes, and you're just getting annihilated. You've been beat 47 to 15 in game threes. 47 to 15 in your 0 and 4. We'll talk about the bats, and, and I have a, a proclamation to make here in the next segment. So hang with us. Our Monday show is brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products, gcopnet.com. All your printing, scanning, copier needs. Gulf Coast Office Products have got you covered. Talking some more LSU baseball coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Visit us at LaBerge Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all the hoops and hockey playoff action. We've got the biggest screens, the best food and drink, plus giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. You're not a member? That's fixable. Just join today. Download and register for the Pin Play app from the App Store. That's the Pin Play app from the App Store. You can unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in Pin Cash. All this and more. Make LaBerge Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. 
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing, and sheet metal. Charles Hanniger joins us for the Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch. We are at Doe's Eat Place on Government Street in Mid-City. We'll take a look back at the national championship game, and Andy Isco joins us from Las Vegas. Live at Lunch from Doe's, 11 a.m. Tuesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You are listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Baseball break, breakdowns all year long, brought to you by Pluckers Wing Bar, and we're certainly in the middle of an LSU baseball breakdown here. I started with the pitching there because everyone, myself included, assumed that the pitching would be the backbone of this team while the offense got figured out. I think that was a fair thing to assume, and the reality is that the pitching has not done nearly enough to keep LSU afloat. I mean, in SEC games, you're 11th in the league in ERA, 12th in hits allowed, 12th in runs allowed, 10th in walks allowed, 11th in doubles allowed, 10th in home runs allowed, and you've got the most wild pitches in the league. It's just been an absolute disaster from a pitching perspective more often than not. And that's with Luke Holman being pretty good. His numbers aren't as sparkling as they were in the pre-conference, but he's been pretty good. He's striking guys out. He's generally giving LSU a, a chance to win, and basically no one else outside of Griffin Herring is, is doing that, but it's not all on the pitching. The offense has its significant issues as well. You're, you're 11th in the league in runs scored in league games. You're ninth in on-base percentage, and you're 10th in doubles. And your, your offense is built around a lot of guys who kind of do things the same way. Tommy White and Hayden Travinsky and Jared Jones are just very, very similar hitters. They are. And when... Ethan Fry's in there. He's a similar hitter to them. Now, you do have some guys who are a little bit different. You've got Milam, who's a switch hitter, who hits some line drives. You've got Larson in there a little bit, who's left-handed and can run a little bit. But the, the, the bulk of your offense is big guys who would like to slug. You're not very athletic. Tommy White doesn't run very well. Brady Neal doesn't run very well. Alex Malazzo doesn't run very well. Jarek Jones doesn't run very well. Michael Braswell doesn't run very well. And the guys who do run well, like Jake Brown and Paxton Kling and, and even Larson, either aren't playing a ton or aren't producing. And so you, you've got this lineup built around guys who want to slug, and they're not slugging a ton. White is, and Jones has been good. But you can't do anything else. You, you don't have a high on base percentage. You don't get a lot of hits. You're not stealing any bases ever. You've attempted one steal in 12 SEC games. I don't see aggressiveness with the hit and runs. and they're just It's just kind of stand there and try to bash it. And last year, <laughs> they could stand there and bash it. And this team at times has hit. Tommy White's been really good in SEC play. Jared Jones has continued to become a really good hitter. But Travinsky hasn't been awesome in SEC play. You've got nothing out of Kling, very little out of Neal, nothing out of Brown, not a ton out of Milam. Like, you just haven't been great, and you haven't found that combo. And you've pushed so many buttons. I just rattled off all those buttons that they've pushed. They've played three catchers. They've gotten Ethan Fry some at-bats and Milam some at-bats. They've gotten Jake Brown some at-bats. You've moved different guys around in the outfield. Bingham's played center, and he's played left. And you've tried Pearson at second and in the outfield. But... It just hasn't really been good enough. And there's another part of this before I get to this, this proclamation that I'm going to make. Like, we saw this team compete favorably with regional level competition over in Houston. Like, Texas is 7-5 and five in the Big 12. And, oh, by the way, they've lost every LeBaron Johnson start, and they're still 7-5 and five in Big 12 play. And Louisiana Lafayette's won 13 games in a row and, and likely going to make a regional. And LSU went over there and played really well. The starting pitching was excellent. They got clutch hitting. They hit the ball over the fence. They played good defense. Like, they, they had a really good week in Houston. And baseball's a funny game. Like, Missouri sweeps Florida, like, whatever. Like, it's a funny game. And sometimes you play 
a little bit better. Sometimes you play a little bit worse, and the results can be fickle. It's not like football where the, the better team wins far, far more often than not. But the fact of the matter is that LSU has played very poorly. I've illustrated that for 20 minutes now. Their statistics are bad offensively. Their statistics are bad pitching. They haven't played good defense. You benched your shortstop because he leads the SEC in airs. Like, they've played really poorly, and that's the biggest piece of this pie. But there's also a piece of this pie that is because the SEC is, is, is very, very difficult. The SEC is as souped up right now as it's ever been because you've got high school seniors who are passing on draft dollars to go play in college because of NIL, and you've got players who have excelled elsewhere, whether it's the Pac-12, Big 12, smaller college, the Sun Belt, wherever, that are now coming into the SEC as transfers. And you've got as talented a group of players in the Southeastern Conference as there has ever been. And there is something to the fact that if LSU was playing in a Big 12 schedule, their record would probably look different. There is something to the fact that if Auburn or Missouri had come to the box over the last four weeks, the record probably looks a little bit different. There is something to the fact that that LSU is facing Jack Caglione on a Sunday in a rubber match and Carter Holton on a Sunday in a rubber match instead of your traditional Game 3 starters that you've seen forever and ever, amen. Like, it's really difficult. And LSU has taken this, this group of guys who are trying to figure it out and very much have not and playing this ridiculous schedule. And it's not getting any easier because Tennessee next week, their offense is hitting home runs at a bigger clip, a better clip, than they were two years ago. Remember that offense? They're hitting more home runs right now. So when you put those two things together, you've got three and nine. You're playing poorly. The schedule's obscene. Three and nine. And we have seen over the years, LSU baseball teams find it in the middle of the season. The most famous instance of that is obviously 2008. In 2008, you were 6-11-1 in league play and routed off 24 straight through Hoover in the, in the regional and made it to Omaha. Even 2016, you were 11-10 and 10 in league play, kind of middling. Then the rally possum thing happens against Arkansas, and they won eight of their last nine league games. And things like that happen. Tennessee last year was 5-15. Five, was five and 15, five, Sorry, 5-10 five and 10 through 15. They were in the final four. Ole Miss two years ago was 5-10 and 10 at the turn. And they won the national championship. We've seen turnarounds in baseball seasons in the Southeastern Conference and certainly here at LSU. I don't think it's coming for this group. I don't. Like, that pains me to say. Because y'all know, if you've listened to me for any length of time, how much I love the journey of a baseball season. How much I enjoy teams trying different things and evolving over time in a way that happens, I think, more than you see in a basketball season or in a football season. There's always time as long as there's time. Meaning, like, if you've got some games left to play, you can figure it out. You're not, you're not buried after a bad two, three weeks. Well, this is a bad month, and I'm not expecting awesome stuff this weekend. But I just don't know if this team's going to be able to do it based on the numbers. I believe they will play better. At some point. I believe they will win a series. I believe they'll win two series in a row at some point. But you have put yourself in a position where the math works so strongly against you that it seems unlikely to me that they're going to get this righted in time to make it in the NCAA tournament play. It's always possible. I don't believe that it's going to happen. And here's why. Because let's just be generous and say you get one in Knoxville. You lose two out of three, but you get a game. That means you're 4-11 and 11 at the turn. You would have to go 10-5 and five the rest of the way to make it into the postseason, in my opinion. 10-5 and five over 15 games. You don't have a third starter. You have one and a half bullpen guys you trust and an ace. Plus, you can't figure out shortstop defensively, and your offense really only has one way to score runs. It, it, to me, I realize the schedule's brutal, but you're going to play more brutal teams. A&M's really good. Really good. Still got three with Tennessee. I don't think Auburn's good. I don't think Missouri's good, even though they swept Florida this week. I don't know what to make of Alabama at this point. But I, I'm fully aware 
that last year I sat here and hammered the panic button on LSU's bullpen and, and really the pitching staff as a whole, and all that happened was they were lights out the entire postseason. Ty Floyd has to come out of a regional game because of a rain delay. Thatcher Hurd comes in and strikes out 12. Your back's against the wall in Omaha. You got nowhere to turn. Nate Ackenhausen gives you six innings of one-run baseball. Thatcher Hurd's brilliant in the national final after giving up a two-run homer to the second battery faces. Griffin Herring, great. Gavin Gidry, great. Javen Coleman gave you a start and got you off to a decent start. Like, the guys figured it out. And I was dead wrong to hammer the panic button because you blew leads against Auburn and uh, Mississippi State. And I realize that I'm sitting here doing basically the exact same thing after having watched last year. But I'm not really here to try to make stuff up or to just pump sunshine all the time. Like, when I watch this team, I do not see a team that I think is going to win 14 SEC games. I still believe there is talent. I still believe Jay is a great coach. And I believe the schedule gets easier. I think you have dug yourself such a massive hole through four weeks that I don't believe that you'll get out of it. I'm going to watch every pitch and I'll be locked in tomorrow watching them and, and I'll be fired up to watch Luke Coleman pitch on Friday. And I hope he goes out there and shoves in Knoxville and strikes all those guys out and Tony Vitello cries himself to sleep. I would love nothing more. But I cannot sit here after watching that for a month and suggest to you that it's likely to get a lot better. I mean, those guys have got to be shell-shocked when they get to Alec Box Stadium. You're talking about guys who were big-time draft prospects, best player on their high school teams, national showcase guys, some guys that have been great college players that showed up at LSU with an expectation you were going to have to work really hard and you were in a tough league and you know things are going to at times be tough, but you have an expectation that you're going to be among the best teams in the country. And all of a sudden, you look up, and there's one team between you and the seller in the league? Like, that's, that's shocking. I'm shocked. You're probably shocked. If you would have told me that this was going to be the case, after they won game two in Starkville, they played really well in the non-conference, lost game one in Starkville, but came back and won game two, I'd be like, yeah, I, you know, they just got to... I, I, was, I was hopeful they would get through the first 15 at eight and seven. They are not even going to get close to that. And and I just, I cannot sit here and suggest to you that I think they're they're close to figuring out. It is possible. I just don't know where it's going to come from. Maybe there's something to the fact that they show up on Sundays and get absolutely annihilated. Like, that's 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 even worse, I think, than losing. If you were losing some tight games... I could say, man, they're they're pretty close. But this is a trend of just running out of pitching and sending everyone up there to the mound to just watch lasers fly past them. I just, I don't have the confidence. I hope I'm singing a different tune in, in three weeks. They win two out of three in Knoxville. They go up to Missouri and sweep and come back and play Auburn and, and get two out of three and all of a sudden, you look up and, okay, this is manageable. But they got a lot of work to do to get there. I hope they do it. Our baseball breakdowns all season long brought to you by Pluckers Wing Bar. Get on by. Get you some Breggies Creole Crush New Wing Sauce. Alex Bregman uh, seasoning inspired. It's really, really good stuff over there at Pluckers. When we come back, Brian Kelly met with the media after LSU's scrimmage on Saturday. One more week to go of spring football. We'll talk about that coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Platinum Window Tent. PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com is the website. Look, not every day is an eclipse, so the sun is going to show up. It's going to cause its issues here in South Louisiana. We understand what that means to our energy bills at home and in the workplace. They skyrocket. June, July, August, even September. Just brutal on the checking account because you got to pay those high energy costs. Get some help with that. The folks at Platinum Window Tent LLC can come over, tent your windows at your home or your place of work. And if you've got a lot of sun exposure and a lot of window exposure, they can lessen those energy costs, in some cases, by 40%. A lot of folks don't know that this is a possibility, but it absolutely is. Go to the website. It's a brand new website. so functional. You can get that free quote. And look, you can get that um, 
free quote, and you can look at the, uh, the list of services that they have. It's all right there at PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500. Join me for a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Gulf Coast Office Products. Getting you ready for the national championship game in college basketball and reacting to LSU and Vandy in baseball. Hunt Palmer hey, Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. <laughs> You are listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. We'll talk some uh, LSU football with Wilson Alexander one hour from now at 2.30. Uh, Wilson obviously covers the beat for The Advocate and was out there at the scrimmage uh, back on Saturday. LSU spring game coming up this coming Saturday, so we'll have certainly preview that this week and we'll uh, react to it coming up on Monday as LSU spring football comes to a wrap here in 2024. Brian Kelly met with the media back on Saturday after LSU's final uh, scrimmage pre-spring game and I had a few interesting things to say, and and I want to focus on a lot of the talk around the running backs and the running game. We understand that LSU was in a situation back in fall camp of 2023 where they had eight scholarship running backs, and now you're sitting there and the numbers are critically low. Um, so you go through a spring, and you've just got Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson handling everything. Trey Holly is away from the team, been suspended with that legal situation. We've had a change in the charges where – the uh, the the second degree murder charge has has been dropped, but there's some felonies that have been 
attached to Trey Holly, and we'll just have to see how that shakes out in court, and Brian Kelly spoke to that as well. But right now you've got two scholarship running backs, and Brian Kelly spoke about how that's worked in the spring. It's work volume. You can't run those guys into the ground and, and have a really good practice, you know, because at the end of the practice, you know, you're doing, you know, a lot of teamwork. And if you're running those guys into the ground, you, you really can't have the kind of reps that you're looking for. So, you know, we brought in three walk-ons who have done a great job. I mean, really have allowed us to practice at a level where they can step in and whether it's a um, seven on seven or, or it's a half line pass or half line run have allowed those guys to take a, a break. So without those guys in particular, we would not be in a really good position in the spring. So we got saved by the bell in terms of the walk-ons at the running back position. Kelly mentioned that he was actually at a coaching clinic when he found out that Holly's charges had been dropped and then there had been more development on the legal front there. And so he spoke to kind of how they're going to handle Trey Holly's eligibility at this point. We advocated for him to continue his schooling and we were happy that he was able to continue his schooling here as an online student. So he's maintained his, his eligibility because of that. So we'll be, you know, obviously uh, monitoring and making sure that, you know, I think, they're talking about, you know, sometime in the middle of April that that we could see a full resolution to this. At that time, you know, we'll we'll begin the process and assisting him for uh, reinstatement, and we'll advocate for him on his behalf and um, and and welcome him back. So that's a, a pretty optimistic picture of of where things stand from the first perspective. It's time. It's like okay. How long is this going to take? Because obviously it's a, a very, very serious issue. We've had loss of life here in, in, uh, in northeast Louisiana, and that can at times take a long time to get a resolution from. Um, but it sounds like they think in the next couple of weeks there will be some resolution. So that's not something I expected to hear, and I don't know enough details about the case to speak really any further on that, just to say that I'm surprised personally to hear Brian Kelly say that there could be some resolution here in the next uh, couple of weeks. But to move to the football field, where LSU is trying to work on getting a run game in implemented, um, I think this is a pretty important spring for Joe Sloan and this offense to figure out how they're going to change things from running the ball. We've talked about it a ton over the last six weeks because you understand that the quarterback run game is going to change significantly and that the offensive line should be a real strength of the team. So you've got to figure out how to run the football a little bit differently than you did last year. And Brian Kelly spoke to the run game development to this point in this spring. We have to be centered more with tailback runs, you know, making up for the loss of, of a Daniels who picked up quite a bit of yardage for us. We've really focused on those runs. And I'm really pleased with, you know, the development of the run game uh, in the spring. We can see it. And, you know, we've got a talented offensive line. We're letting them, you know, really see some new things and do some things that we haven't done over the last couple of years. And it's, it's quite exciting. I have lamented um, the talent level in LSU's running back room over the last couple of seasons. Just calling it like I see it. I watched for my entire football viewing life LSU churn through NFL running backs from the state of Louisiana. You can go on the list. It's really easy to, to run through. But it's guys that look like Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis and Jeremy Hill. It's it's guys that look like Kevin Falk, Dominic Davis, and LeBrandon Tofield. Like, guys that were pros. And I don't know that I've seen a ton of that the last couple of years. But I think I see it in Caleb Jackson. Every time he touches the football, I find myself going, oh. And I just am not, well, I, I think I know why he didn't touch it as much last year because they really trust older players. Brian Kelly trusts older players to play. But the talent level is undeniable. I mean, I thought he was brilliant in the bowl game. He got two touches. One was a touchdown. And, and I, I see that combination of, of size and power and speed. And I'm like, get that dude the ball. And I feel like this spring, because there are so few running backs, only two scholarship running backs out there, that this is going to be a really good time for his development and, and to gain trust from the staff. Because if they don't trust him, Josh Williams is going to get 
far and away the, more, the most carries of this team. He may anyway. But if I know they trust Josh Williams. The question is, how much do they trust Caleb Jackson and how much development has, has gone on over the last six weeks? You know, what we've been balancing here is his workload. As you guys know, we have two scholarship backs in spring ball. And we want to be careful with Williams because he's a guy that is so important to us and, and we don't want, you know, to put him in any compromising situation. So he's a big back. He's growing into his body. So the workload capacity and the fatigue has really taught him how to take care of himself. He's understanding how to eat better, how to uh, hydrate, how to recover. And those are great things, right? I mean, because he cares so much, we'll catch him up on blitz protections and things of that nature. This is how he takes care of his body. So that's where we're at with him. That's the chapter that he's going through. And I'm fine with it because he's learning so much about himself right now. I hope they can get that guy out of the field in a hurry. Uh, just the talent level, it just, it, it, it's, it's impressive. I mean, you, you all saw the highlight plays last year, the, the, the play around left in against Mississippi State where he just trucks a guy. He got up to full speed a couple times on kickoff returns, one down the left sideline in a home game. I mean, he's, he's got the tools, and I just would really like him to be more involved than he was last year in this LSU running game. There, there's, there's question mark there. There's not with Josh Williams. There's not with your two tackles. There's not with your two guards. You know what those guys are. The only piece to this that's got to be resolved is the center position. And by all accounts, DJ Chester's had a pretty dadgum good spring. And Brian Kelly spoke to uh, the guy that's taking over for Charles Turner. What we were looking for at that position, and we knew that we were going to be inserting a younger player with veterans, was somebody that was mature and, and handled himself in, in that manner. He is all business. He handles himself in a very professional manner. He takes care of business off the field. You know, if he if he's walking around here and he's interacting, you'd think he's a junior or a senior. His demeanor is a lot different than a young player. And we needed to vet that out in the recruiting process because if we were going to handle it that way uh, or hand it over to him, we needed somebody. And that's what I look for in the center position. That's encouraging to hear because he's stepping into a really mature group. I mean, Will Campbell has played a lot of football. Emory Jones played a lot of football. Miles Frazier's in his fifth year of college football. He's played a lot. Garrett Dellinger's played a lot of football. And then Garrett Nussmeyer, although he hasn't played as much, he's he's been around. He's been around a long time. So is Josh Williams. So you're walking into a group that's really old. And I think to hear that he is is adjusted that quite easily is a very, very encouraging thing. I, I don't know how much they're going to put on his plate from a, a protection standpoint, from a, an alignment standpoint. Like, I, you know, when you're talking about guys as old and, and experienced and good as the other four offensive linemen, I don't know if you can divvy those responsibilities up or, or how much it goes into the situation. But I think that that's an encouraging deal because if DJ Chester is really good, then that offensive line is going to be really good. If that offensive line's really good, it just makes things really easy on the rest of the crew. Hopefully that's a little bit of Caleb Jackson uh, as well. But that's kind of a look at where they are from a run game perspective. Uh, we'll hear some more uh, from um, Wilson Alexander coming up uh, at the bottom of hour number two. But that's a little Brian Kelly sound from over the weekend. One more week to go for LSU spring football. Our football reports you can uh, check out on YouTube, Hunt on LSU. Hunt on LSU is the channel. You can subscribe to it, all your LSU football news Come right into your uh, right into your feed if you subscribe to our channel. Like, comment. We always appreciate it if you'll ha- help us out there on YouTube. Moving right along here on a Monday show brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products, gcopnet.com. Love talking to my guy Trey Beal about office products because he's so passionate about it. Um, and he often s- jokes like, yeah, it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but, but I like it. And you can tell because he's really, really good at it. If you've never given thought to your printing, copying, scanning situation, you just, hey, where's where's the best deal on a printer? then you've probably not put enough thought into it. But Trey has, and he works with all different types of vertical markets, whether it's healthcare, whether it's attorneys, whether it's education, banks, us, little media company here. He knows what your needs are from a copying, printing scan standpoint, and he can deliver that for you with Gulf Coast Office products. It's gcopnet.com. Give him a call. Ask for Trey Beal. He'll be your rep. He'll have an awesome relationship for him, and you'll be taken care of by Gulf Coast Office products for your printing scanning, and copying. One more segment to go here in hour number one. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. 
You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Audio Video Security Solutions, A-V-S-S-L-A dot com is where you can find them online on Instagram, A-V-S-S underscore B-R. Ran into Mitchell Fisher yesterday. I was picking up lunch and he was coming off the pickleball court. Got a great relationship with Mitchell. And if anything ever goes wrong at my house, I know exactly who to call. I get the owner of the company and he can always tell me how to deal with it. I was sitting outside for about two and a half hours yesterday uh, watching my son hit a ball off a tee over and over and over and over again. And I was listening to some country tunes right there from the uh, audio system that they put on our back patio. He's awesome. Their company's awesome. They do fantastic work, and we've been thrilled at, with their work at our house. It's Audio Video Security Solutions. You can check them out at avssla.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Monday's AFR. Presented by Relief Windows, media gets full access to LSU's scrimmage. We'll have a full recap on Monday's AFR. 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. So I guess the eclipse is going on now. I'm getting text messages. People are saying that this eclipse isn't that cool because there's a lot of clouds everywhere. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know much about eclipses. I can't, I can't help you there. But I hope, you, I hope those of you that are out there looking at it with your glasses on are, are impressed. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a big eclipse guy. Uh, I'm also not a huge NBA guy. But color me interested right now because they're coming down the home stretch. And look, Jordan, we talked about this last week. Sure did. And 
I know. I want to talk about the fact that they won yesterday because that was huge. That was a really, really big win, and I want to get to that. But yeah. I have to start in a certain spot here. You are in crunch time trying to stay out of this play-in. 100%. You are in a fight standing-wise with three or four teams, and Brandon Ingram is hurt. Yep. And I'm logging on to Twitter, and I see on Friday the Pelicans' official count tweet out that Zion Williamson is out tonight against San Antonio with a finger contusion. Yep. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what a finger contusion is. It sounds like his finger hurt. And I got to be quite honest with you. Um, if you're the best player on the team and the second best player on the team is hurt and you're fighting for your life right down the stretch and you don't play because your finger hurt, I got a little bit of an issue. I got to know where you stand on this. We know you love your pills. Yes. I had... I, I, Look, again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what a finger contusion is. Ronnie Lott, like, played with, they amputated his finger so he could play. So sure I, did. I, I'm, I'm trying to, to understand how this happens. Okay, well, it's more of a jam finger, so that's what I'm just going to roll with. It was a jam finger. Okay. But he didn't play Friday after I came on the show and was like, he's going to play, Hunt. You got to believe him. <laughs> give him. Give him a chance. He's going to play. He didn't play Friday, and Victor Wimbyama, well, Wimby did what he had to do, but Devontae Graham, who hasn't scored 20 points in like the last three to four months, comes out and drops 20 on the Pelicans. You know, he used to play with the Pelicans. He I, did. The last year or the year before that. So it was one of those homecoming games, you know, you know, F you to the guys that, you know, let you go. <laughs> but, man, Zion sitting out, I, I was probably one of my lowest points. I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I kept going back to the scene in, in Happy Gilmore where Happy's grandmother is at the nursing home and she got Ben Stiller, who's there, as the and she's knitting. She says, my, my fingers hurt. And he goes, oh, yeah? Well, now your back's going to hurt because you just yeah. pulled landscaping duty. And she's in a nursing home and her finger hurts. Zion is in his prime, and we're trying to win, win, get into the playoffs here. Yeah. And he's not playing because his finger hurts. I, that was unacceptable to me. However, we know that Devin Booker has owned the Pellies, 50-burger, three straight times. You're going on the road. To Phoenix, tough spot, super hostile. The, a, a hostile crowd. You've got uh, the Final Four in town. It's a huge weekend in, in Scottsdale, Phoenix area. And they got it done, like they've done on the road all year. Do you have any explanation to why the Pelicans are awesome on the road and can't get it done in the blender? My, you know, just my analysis, because I, I watch a lot of Pelicans games. So I'm my thing would be is we're a young team. Not everybody has a family. So usually younger teams on the road, they, they, don't, they don't have that, oh, I need to be in my bed. You know, I got my kids at the house and all that. So that's where my assumption comes from. Like, it's just young. We, you know, it, we're a family. After the game, Zion and Jose, it was walking off the court. You know, one of the, the camera guys came up to him. And it was like, you know, good team W. We're a family. We stick together. This diversity we've been going through all season. It just shows you what type of team we are. So Zion, he might have sat out Friday and broke my heart. But, man, he probably had the his best game of his career to me. Rejection of KD at the rim. Forget KD. He, he beat Bill, whoever, whoever. Yeah. It could be anybody. Zion was dealing with him. He wasn't just dealing with him that way. Defensive, he was just locked in from start to finish. So if he's like this, we got four games left. 50 wins is not out the question, but it's, it's going to be tight. It's did, they, be tight. did they surprise you yesterday, or did you think they would win? I thought we was going to lose. They definitely surprised me. I, I, I'm going to be real. I wasn't mad enough to watch the game. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was not mad enough to watch the game. I, I just couldn't bring my heart to it after watching what happened Friday. And then I'm just watching the, the live updates like, oh, my, we actually have a chance. So. Look, I was, I was shaking up for my buddies that are huge Pels guys back on Friday. I, I could not – maybe they should have just lied on the tweet and said something that sounded a little more serious than a finger contusion. You could have said his finger broke. I would have <laughs> yeah, took that. I mean, I just – give me something other than – I don't think I've ever seen that written before. He, yeah, finger contusion. It sounds like, oh, just shake it out a little bit. Put some tape on it. G give me something and go out there. Like, C.J. McCollum last year played with one hand. Yeah. Like, his wrist and fingers were well, shot. His, his thumb. It was his thumb. Yeah, and, and he, he could, he was, but he's out there every night. He couldn't yeah. make a three, but, he, you know, B.I. And, and Zion were hurt. So, like, yeah. it's my show, and he was out there. I, I needed Zion out there on, on Friday, and, he you know, he may have redeemed himself on Sunday, but maybe – Maybe you needed that game against the bad Spurs team. We'll just have to see. That's it for hour number one here on the Hunt Palmer Show. Covered a lot of topics here on this Monday. Opened the show uh, talking LSU baseball, specifically the pitching and, and how big a letdown that has been. 
Then I talked about the offense and really the situation as a whole and told you I just don't know that they're going to rectify this this year. It's it's shocking to me, um, and I'm, I'll be thrilled if I'm dead wrong, but that's kind of where I sit right now. If you want to listen to some of my reaction there, you can catch that uh, on demand. We had some Brian Kelly sound talking about this LSU run game as they try to figure out the offensive line with DJ Chester, what's going on with Trey Holly, and how's the development of Caleb Jackson gone, all of that. Um, is uh, is on demand as well. You can catch it wherever you find sound, whether it's 104.5 ESPN.com's On Demand tab, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you find your sound, you can si- uh, find us. Also on YouTube at uh, Hunt on LSU. Uh, second final football with us at 2.30. He was at the scrimmage back on Saturday, so excited to chat a little bit with Wilson. We come Lexington to go to Fayetteville to coach the Hogs. What does it mean for Arkansas? What does it mean for Kentucky? I'll tell you that after Sports Center. You're listening to a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletes Council of Presidents approved a policy to ban transgender athletes from women's competitions by a 20 to 0 vote. Athletes in NAIA will now only be able to compete in women's sports if they were assigned the female gender at birth. A major coaching shakeup in college basketball. John Calipari at some point today expected to complete a contract to become the new coach at Arkansas. So Kentucky will start over after his 15-year tenure. Notes ESPN college basketball analyst Jay Williams. If you want to be older, if you want to go up for a guy like Scott Drew over at Baylor, if you want to try to pull Jay Wright out of retirement or a guy mm. like Billy Donovan with the Chicago Bulls, or if you want to go with a guy like Nate Oates, who is one of the hottest coaches in the country right now, literally at Alabama, who just took his team to the Final Four. With Calipari's looming exit, Kentucky's Aaron Bradshaw is the first to enter the transfer portal. A matchup of one seeds to cap off March Madness tonight, defending champ Connecticut versus Purdue in the men's national title game. The Huskies seeking to become the first repeat men's champ in 14 years. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream, an American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America, Close Shave Barbasol. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Live, Live from the Mercedes Benz, Benz of Baton, Baton Rouge Studios. Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hour number two, Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products. During that break there, I went out in the hallway to kind of check out the eclipse from through the window. Uh, it's raining outside. I didn't even know it was raining. Complete cloud cover, no eclipse. But I was informed by Kay Wasan right down the hall, there's another one in 54 years. So uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just wait. Um, I'll have to watch that one from my nursing home. But 54 years, we'll see another one. <laughs> I don't, I'm getting a lot of pictures on Twitter that are a little bit interesting. And my sister, who's a uh, elementary school teacher, uh, has an entire class out there in the parking lot. And she sent a video of it. I'm just reminded that I don't know that I, I want her job anytime soon. That's a, that's a lot of loud humans that are running around that she's in charge of. So I'll just talk about sports here. Uh, that, that's fine with everybody uh, out there. So let's crank this up in hour number two, talking about uh, John Calipari. Um, this is so fascinating to me. I've, I've said this a couple times over the last two years because I felt like the end of the, the road in Lexington was coming for John Calipari. I just didn't know exactly when. And I figured that they would, they would fire him. Um, but... He's leaving to go to Arkansas. Why? Well, I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, there's one main reason. The main reason is not money. It's not home for John Calipari. It's not a better job. The main reason is he has run his race at Kentucky and the relationship there between him and the fan base that supports that machine is broken. The results there over the last six years are not acceptable by Kentucky standards. You are not winning the SEC. You are not advancing in the NCAA tournament. You're not winning the SEC tournament. You're, you're not an elite level SEC basketball program. Auburn's program has been better over the last five years. Alabama's program has been better the last five years. Arkansas has made consistently better runs than you in the NCAA tournament the last five years. Kentucky is just a good program. Tennessee has had a better program than Kentucky over the last five years. John Calipari got that thing humming in Lexington in that one-and-done era. 
where he got John Wall, and he got Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and he got DeMarcus Cousins, and he got Eric Bledsoe, and he got Carl Anthony Towns, and he that's he, and, and that was they were great, great, and then Duke jumped in there and they started getting that top dude, they started getting Jabari Parker and Jalil Okafor, they started getting Zion Williamson, and. Kentucky was still getting good classes, but they weren't at that level. And then you see in the era of the transfer portal where everyone's old and no one's relying on 18-year-old five stars. And John Calipari still is. And he got a crop of incredibly talented and productive 18-year-old five stars. And they lost to Oakland. Like the ones before them lost to St. Peter's. And that's just not acceptable at Kentucky. And John Calipari knew that. But there wasn't really an exit lane. Like, you either take the $33 million and get fired, or you're going to be the coach of Kentucky. And then Eric Musselman jumps to USC. And then there becomes an exit lane. This is, make no bones about it, a step down professionally for John Calipari. No doubt about it. Going from Kentucky, which I believe is the best job in college basketball. You can argue Duke, you can argue Carolina, you can argue Kansas, whatever. I think Kentucky's the best. SEC network, money, booster base, passion, resources. I think Kentucky's the best. And he's going down to Arkansas, who was very, very relevant for a blip in the 90s and has had three good Elite Eight runs here recently, but outside of that is no more important in the landscape of college basketball than Tennessee. But he's got a relationship with one of their big boosters, Tyson Chicken, and he got on the phone, said, okay, if we can make this work financially, I'll come be the head coach at Arkansas. And that's why he's leaving, because the relationship between John Calipari and Big Blue Nation is untenable. So now he goes to to Arkansas. Why does Arkansas do this? Well, I think it's a good move for Arkansas. This is a very, very high floor hire because John Calipari is going to get high school recruits to come play in Fayetteville. He just is. He can still recruit and still talk a big talk, and Arkansas is going to unload the Brinks truck on NIL. I think most of you know this, but if you don't, Arkansas's got more big money donors that are well known than in really anybody in the SEC. You've got the Walmart, the Walton family with Walmart. You got Jerry Jones with the Cowboys. You got Tyson Chicken, who's making this happen, and you've got JB Hunt Trucking. That's a lot of money, and they're going to back it up. And John Calipari is going to recruit at a really high level. They're not going to fall off a cliff. They could hire the next Eric Musselman, the head coach at Nevada. And it might work out like Eric Musselman did. It might be John Pelfrey. You, you just don't know. It might be Nate Oates from Buffalo. It might be a complete flop. But John Calipari is not going to flop. My contention is he can't coach him. And you're going to be going against men. And you're going to have the same type of non-output that Kentucky's had from a high-end success metric. like I don't think Arkansas is going to be in the running to win a national championship with John Calipari. I think he'll recruit. No coach, but I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to have a good team most years, and that's not a guarantee at Arkansas. Now, one little side thing about Arkansas before I get to Kentucky, I'm wondering what the conversations are like between Sam Pittman and the Boosters now. Because John Calipari is getting this money to pay his players. And I don't know if Sam Pittman is. We may have reallocated some funds that were designed for football, but I don't really have a lot of confidence that you're doing a lot with this money in football. Let's just go give it to a future NBA guy with John Calipari. That's a little bit more fun. We're still going to get our teeth kicked in by Alabama every year in football. We're still going to get our teeth kicked in. we got to go play Georgia. We're not as good as LSU. Ole Miss is going to beat us. Why don't we just go ahead and try to make a good basketball program? 
And all of a sudden, Arkansas football could become a doormat pretty quick. I think this is an unintended side effect of this hire. But I think it makes sense for Arkansas. I think there are a lot of folks that I'm following in Fayetteville that are resistant to the fact that John Calipari hasn't had any NCAA tournament success in six years with a lot of really good players. But Elvis is coming to town, and it's a big deal. Now, Kentucky is fascinating here because I have complained for the last two years about Duke and North Carolina hiring the next guy on the bench. John Shire, Huber Davis, go replace the legend. That, to me, is not the best way to go about it. When you are a superpower, when you are a blue blood, you flex your muscles. You make it work. You go get your guy. And they, to me, settled. And it's worked out okay. They've had good teams. But Kentucky's not doing that. Because Kentucky is unhappy with the way that this regime has performed the last six years. They want a fresh face. So... They're, I've got to, I do this like five times a year. I, I've got a little birdie here. And the birdie has suggested that Kentucky has already flown to Phoenix to see Danny Hurley. That's word I got last night. And, you know, that's what I would do too. That's what they should do. You take your horse racing money, you take your bourbon money, you take your big Blue Nation money, and you say, Danny, $11 million a year. Leave Connecticut, come turn us into a power. And maybe Danny Hurley is very happy at UConn. He's got every resource he needs there. But you know what is the Big East? Used to be the best basketball conference in the country, but it's way fallen behind in terms of television revenue, the Big Ten and the SEC. You've got more resources at Kentucky than you would at UConn. Now, you may be perfectly happy at UConn. I don't know. But if you can get seven extra million dollars and have that machine behind you, you set yourself up for life and you you just, you, this is your last stop. That's what I would do if I was Kentucky. The names you'll also hear, Nate Oates, Scott Drew, Billy Donovan, Bruce Pearl, Brad Stevens is somebody that the guys at Live at Lunch brought up. Go get your dude, Kentucky. Like, I don't even like Kentucky basketball. I don't really hate Kentucky basketball. But I'm fascinated by the dynamics in college athletics. And we haven't seen a true blue blood go hire a coach in a long time. Duke, we've, we none of us have seen it. North Carolina, Roy Williams, there a long time. But that's the last. I mean, they brought him home from Kansas. That's a big swing. That's getting your dude. Kansas, Bill Self was an up-and-comer. He had success at Oral Roberts. Then obviously had some really good teams at Illinois, and they went and got him. Go get the next guy. I'm fascinated to see what Kentucky does. They will be better off without John Calipari. In Arkansas, we'll have a high high floor, but I don't know if it's the ceiling they think it is because he hasn't done a great job the last six years. But it's fascinating. I don't really care who South Carolina hires to be their basketball coach. I don't really care who Texas A&M hires to be their basketball coach. I don't really care who Florida hires to be their basketball coach. I do care who Kentucky hires to be their basketball coach because I think that's fascinating. And Cal was the perfect hire when they made it. He had won at UMass. He had won at Memphis. They had ripped his banners out of the rafters both places, but he had won games. And he came to Kentucky, and he was a rock star. He got the dudes, and they got it done. And then he had another historic team that got beat in the Final Four, that had a chance to be a one-loss champ. But since that, it hadn't been a lot. Dynamics very much shifting here in college basketball, and if I'm Kentucky, I'm going to make it real tough for Danny Hurley to tell me no. We'll see. Interesting stuff. Speaking of college basketball, we'll talk about the national final coming up next. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team, 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. If you got a tub that sits in your bathroom that you never use, then get rid of it. Put a glass walk-in shower in there. Changes the aesthetic of your bathroom, looks more modern, and it's more functional. Use what you've got. If you don't use a tub, why do you have it? Tub to shower conversion is just one of the things they can do for you at One Bath and Closets. They also can help you out from a safety perspective. You can put a bench in the shower for 
maybe an aging loved one. If you're aging, you can put non-slip floors in to make things safer. Handrails, guardrails, and some tricky spots in the bathroom. They do that kind of stuff all the time. Get the free consultation with David Duvall and his team. Go to OneBathInCloset.com and click that button and get it scheduled today. It's One Bath and Closets. You can find them online at OneBathAndClosets.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any on Monday's OTB, did the Tigers manage to take the series from Bandy? Plus, the latest from LSU Spring Ball. And we continue to get you ready for the Saints draft. And a brand new edition of Weekend Winners. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. College basketball's national champion going to be crowned tonight, and it's the heavyweight showdown that we we wanted to see. It's UConn, and it is Purdue. Uh, I'm looking for the line here on ESPN Bet. Got it there. Six and a half is the number. Obviously, UConn is, is favored. I previewed the Final Four back on Friday and, and said I just I just don't have the, the confidence – to pick one of the underdogs. I just I don't think that Alabama's going to keep up with UConn for 40 minutes. They did for 35, for 32, um, but they couldn't couldn't for 40. And I just didn't think NC State had the horses to deal with Purdue, and, and Edie was going to be a real problem for them. And I thought NC State did a good job defensively. They have a good defensive team. They slowed the game down, and they kept it within shouting distance. But Purdue 
was in control of that game late. And, and, and I thought that we were going to get the matchup that really we have needed this matchup since really the end of January. Once these teams got into conference play, asserted themselves, you could tell these are the best two teams in the country. And in this tournament, very rarely do you get the best two teams in the country. But this time we did. It's like Omaha last year. You got the best, the, the last three teams standing were the best three teams. Wake Forest, Florida, and LSU, I think, were the best three teams last year. And they happen to be at the end. And that's the case you've got here. There's some interesting kind of nuggets about this matchup before we get into it. Only the ninth time uh, the title game has featured two number one seeds um, since 1985. Nine times since 1985, so a little bit less than 25% of the time you get one seeds. Uh, UConn is looking to go back-to-back -back for the first time since Florida did it in 06 and 07. Uh, Danny Hurley would join Bill Self and Rick Pitino as the only multi-time national champions active in coaching, obviously. You've had Roy Williams, Mike Krzyzewski, um, Jim Calhoun kind of step down over the last handful of years. So uh, Hurley looking to join Self and Pitino. And the Big Ten, I didn't realize this, but I guess you kind of go back and you start thinking, you know, yeah, the Big Ten has not won a national championship since the Flintstones. Mateen Cleave and uh, Mateen Cleaves and Mo Peterson won back in 2000. So Purdue is looking to end a 24-year run of the Big Ten not winning a championship. Ohio State had some good teams, obviously, with Greg Oden. You think of Indiana as being kind of a blue blood, but they're, they haven't really been all that relevant over the last 15, 20 years. Um and then, of course, Miss Michigan of late, Michigan State all those times into the Final Four with, with Tom Izzo, but hadn't gotten it done, so Purdue has an opportunity to, to do that. So as we talk about the actual game, the one thing that I think um, concerns me if I'm Purdue is that UConn has such big guards. Like Cam Spencer, 6'4", Tristan Newton is 6'5", Stephon Castle is 6'6", and such a really good defender, and Purdue's got... A couple of undersized guards that that play a lot for him. Braden Smith's six feet tall, and Lance Jones is six foot one. And I just worry that the the size, length, and athleticism of UConn may bother Purdue. The other piece to this is obviously the the matchup of the bigs with with Kling and and, and Edie, and that's the matchup that is gra going to grab all the headlines. But I think it's the guard play that's that's kind of the difference. Um, UConn is one of the few teams that can straight up play Edie and Smith straight up. Like, they don't have to send a double every time to Edie. They don't have to, to collapse on him as fiercely. They don't have to try to play zone because they can't deal with him. Klingon can go down there and, and deal with Edie. I don't think he's going to shut him down. I think Edie will score 22 points tonight. But they don't have to drastically alter what they do to deal with a seven foot four center because they've got a lottery pick down there who's seven foot two himself. So that allows their guards to go out there and and play defense more traditionally. And I just Purdue's got a really good shooting team. We know that. But I just don't know if if the size is going to bother them. That's my my sincere concern. So to me, like I think this is going to be a good game at halftime. And I think it's going to be a good game with 10 minutes to go. I think UConn's going to run away from them. I, I, Purdue's answer to that would either be Edie controls the game and makes a ton of free throws. Klingon gets in foul trouble and is not out there. Or Purdue bombs away threes. And those are possible. It's possible for Edie to control the game. He's a two-time national player of the year. His jersey's already retired. He might control the game. It's possible for Purdue to make 14, 15 threes. We've seen them do that many times. It's possible for Klingon to get in foul trouble. That can happen. But I'm just not going to bet on those three things. I'm going to bet on UConn and their skill level and their preparedness. And I still just absolutely love to watch them play offense. It's it, it's so it's just poetry to watch them get into these sets and motions, and I think that that they're going to to wear Purdue down, is is my guess. I would I would lay the points in this game. Now there may be plenty of you who immediately fire up the ESPN bet app and immediately fade me, and that'd be great. That's fine. They'd probably make a lot of money doing that over the course of time. I've proven not to be the uh, the most elite with my gambling picks. But I am not about to sit here 
and bet against UConn. <laughs> Have you watched them the last two NCAA tournaments? Like, Bama's got firepower, and they stuck with them for 30-ish, 32 minutes, and eventually, you spit the bet. It's just, it's relentless, and it's both ends of the floor. That's what makes UConn so good. It's not that they're just so oppressive on defense. It's not that they're so efficient on offense. It's that they're both. And that's a huge credit to Danny Hurley's talent evaluation, recruiting ability, and then obviously preparedness and game planning and, and then the team's execution. Matt Painter's been awesome. And you know they have responded so well to the embarrassment of last year. And there's so many parallels between Virginia losing to the 16, coming back and winning it all, and then Purdue last year losing to the 16 and coming back to try to win it all. And all those stories are great. And I'll leave the door open to suggest that it could happen. I, I could not bet it. I think UConn wins this game by 12, 13 points. And I think they're back-to-back champs. And I think there's a chance that Danny Hurley is headed to Lexington after it. That's If you want my official prediction, it's UConn by 14. It's Danny Hurley and Alice as the head coach at Kentucky by the end of the week. That's where my... That's where my prediction set it. Jordan, you got a thought on this game? Got a, just a, a pick, whether it's against the spread or just a winner? Um, pick would be UConn. Okay. It's hard to go against UConn. God. But I do kind of like the story of Edie, you know, writing the passage after he's been, you know, getting bleeped on all year and people just looking down on him, even though he's 7'4". It's kind of hard to look down on someone. Yeah, that's that is, Tracy Wolfson has to get on a, a yes, ladder to do her exactly. interviews. <laughs> like, he looks like the Iron Giant, So, but it, it's hard to go against UConn with clinging. You know, Tristan Newton and uh, Cam Spencer, they're deep, and I, I like Dan Hurley. I will be very devastated if he leaves UConn, though. I don't like how you're tossing this in the air. I'm not a yeah, fan of that. I'm not a fan of the, the Kentucky stuff. But. Yeah, that's what I think. That is what I think. Yeah, I, I just... I could try to be the smartest guy in the room and find a way to pick Purdue, and I think Purdue can win. I'm not. I just can't sit here with good, good conscience and pick against the UConn team that I've watched for two years. Absolutely blitzkrieg everybody in the NCAA tournament. They're just on another level than everybody else in the sport right now, and I think that includes Purdue. Boilermakers, uh, never been to a Final Four, so clearly never won a national championship. Uh, if Zach Eady could bring that home, that'd be a pretty, pretty special deal for a two-time national player of the year. So we'll see this one tonight at, uh, at 8.20, and then coming up after it, we'll hear one shining moment, and I'll be very excited to hear one tiny moment. And then focus turns to Augusta, Georgia for the Masters. So tonight it's UConn and Purdue. I've got the Huskies. So does Jordan. We'll take a timeout, come back. Uh, we'll chat with Wilson Alexander, LSU beat reporter for uh, for football, for The Advocate. Um, see what his thoughts were on LSU's scrimmage back on Saturday. Don't go anywhere. It is the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. Give yourself the peace of mind that comes with a Generac generator from Boudreaux's Electric. Here's the phone number. So this is what you got to call. 985-397-1562. It's 985-397-1562. Get someone out to your home this week to explore a Generac generator. Storm season's around the corner. That peace of mind knowing that power's not going to go out, it's a powerful thing. Whether you're going to ride out a storm and just want to make sure that your, your house is powered, or if you evacuate, you don't want to come back to a house that's 96 degrees and everything in the fridge and freezer is spoiled. That's a bummer. Real drag. Heard a lot of stories, Katrina time, where they had to just put tape around the refrigerator and just take it and throw it away. Hopefully not that bad, but we all know what those fridges can smell like when they've been off for a few days. It's not going to happen if you got that Generac generator. New location opening in Gonzales in the coming weeks. You will not want to miss that. We'll give you some information with some great deals that they've got. But get started today with Boudreaux's Electric. Boudreaux's Electric. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. 
supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. This is Charles Hennigar. Join us for the Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch. We are at Doe's Eat Place on Government Street in Mid-City. We'll take a look back at the national championship game, and Andy Esco joins us from Las Vegas. Live at Lunch from Doe's, 11 a.m. Tuesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Shout out to Trey Buell and the folks at Gulf Coast Office Products. All your printing, copying, scanning needs. GCOPnet.com is your one-stop shop. They bring you our Monday shows each and every week. Let's head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline where we find Wilson Alexander, LSU beat reporter for The Advocate, talking some football. Wilson, how are you? Doing well, Hunt. How are you this afternoon? Doing quite well. I want to get to some of the football that you all saw on Saturday, but um, one of the quotes that Brian Kelly had in the uh, press conference that followed was interesting to me on a couple of levels, and that was when he was talking about Trey Colley's status and suggested that there could be a resolution in April and that they would would advocate for him and, and, and welcome him back. That just seems really quick and seemed really optimistic in what's a, you know, a really, really awful situation. It is a little bit optimistic. What, this is what the, where the situation stands. As I think folks, folks know, the grand jury rejected the charge that had been brought against him of attempted second-degree murder, and so now he just faces the one charge, uh, the felony count of a, essentially illegal discharge of a weapon. The, the exact terminology is given me at the moment, but that's essentially what it is. And you know, so he still has to go through a legal process here. Um, I think maybe what Kelly's referring to is that attorney. Uh, excuse me, Holly's attorney, Mike Small, told me. Uh, I guess it was on Friday, that uh, Holly's arraignment is set for April 17th. And so that's just kind of the next step in the legal process. Um, from what L has been communicated to LSU, though, as based on what Brian Kelly said, is that maybe it could be resolved around that time. Um, however, Small did note that he was going to have to ask to move that arraignment date because of a uh, scheduling conflict. So, you know, if this all goes to a point where all the charges are dropped and Holly gets cleared through the legal process, then at that time, he will be able to apply for reinstatement back basically into on LSU's football team and, you know, go through that process. Um, the team will welcome him back. I don't think there will be any hangups in that process if he's legally cleared. 
um, and in which case he'll be able to rejoin the team. And so the team has some optimism that he'll be a part of it uh, probably sometime this summer during workouts. Do you think LSU is going to add a running back in the spring transfer portal window? It probably kind of depends on Holly's status. You know, if, if they continue to get, uh, you know, sort of a positive momentum toward getting him back, in which case he then have four running backs for this season on a roster that is already over the scholarship limit, then I, uh, then they might just stick at four. Um, but it also kind of depends on, you know, if there's a little bit more attrition coming out of the spring, you know, ball here in a couple of weeks when the portal opens, then perhaps they would look to add somebody else. Um, but either way, it would probably be someone who would have a profile of like, uh, you know, maybe one year of eligibility left, two max, um, who can just take a couple carries here and there. It certainly wouldn't be like a, a star running back in most cases, cause, but most likely anyway with Caleb and Caden Durham coming in and these guys in the future classes like Harlan Berry and such. So um, I, I think if Holly is available, they'll probably take it four. Um, but, you know, there is certainly a possibility that they look for another one in the portal window. But again, it kind of depends on what that roster number looks like because you got to be at the 85-man limit come preseason practice. You'll have had a couple of extended looks at, at practice, including on Saturday. Um, what have you noticed from the running game? It is how different it is schematically. No, not so. And, it, and it's been successful too, which is well, is that a product of LSU's defensive front not being very good, or is it really just highlighting the strength of this offensive line? You know, we'll kind of have to see. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Um, but you know, that's the main takeaway is just how different LSU looks when it is running the football it's a, more of a traditional attack you're seeing counters you're seeing pulling offensive tackles and guards you're seeing toss plays um and then building off of that you know play action rollouts uh, that have been quite successful for them offensively you know in those full team periods um because of when you're able to constantly pull the defense's eyes outside on a run then you know run that play action behind it kind of bootleg has been quite good for them especially i think you know mason taylor had a catch on that Karen lacy had a catch on those plays in saturday's practice and so just time and again, it's not just like, you know, vague offseason talk. It's not Les Miles saying they're going <laughs> to open things up and then run toss dive. Like, no, they're, you can see it every day of practice. They are really implementing a new style to this running game. I will never, ever, ever forget the first three plays that they ran in Lambeau Field after an entire offseason of thinking that LSU was going to modernize <laughs> and change things. And they turned around and handed it to Leonard Fournette three straight times and punted when he had basically one functional ankle. I, I that brings back bad memories. <laughs> Let's talk about LSU. I don't think LSU. you're going to have to deal with that this time. This is a this is truly a different style of running game. We'll see whether or not it's successful, but the style of it is, is definitely going to look different. What's your sense of how much they trust Caleb Jackson? We know that he didn't get a ton of touches last year, and the veterans kind of swallowed all those up. Yeah, I think that they do trust him a good bit. They want to continue to, to see him get better this offseason. You know, just be consistent in everything that he's doing. That's a word that Ellis uses a lot for a lot of players. And, you know, certainly a priority for Brian Kelly and something that he values. But and I think that's kind of it for Caleb is just that, you know, they've seen what flashes of what he can do. And talent-wise, it's all there. It's just kind of putting it together, you know, and having him sort of over time understand, you know, all the nuances of the offense and kind of like in terms of pass protection and, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield. It's not like we, you know, in the limited viewings that we've had of him this spring, it's not like he's popped necessarily at those times, but we know what he can do. I don't think that's like a really indicative of what he's going to do this fall. Um, you know, we continue to see Josh Williams get a lot of run with the first team as well. You know, so it's probably at this point going to be set up where, you know, Josh is getting a good bit of carries, but, you know, Caleb is too, and they're going to rotate, you know. Um, that, that's most likely what it's going to be, especially to start the season. And so, um I think that's just kind of where Caleb's at right now is just kind of continuing to mold every, you know, improve every part of his game so that he can have this breakout year two. Chatting with Wilson Alexander, LSU beat reporter for the Advocate covering the football squad. They got a chance to check out uh, Saturday's workout in uh, on campus. Um, is there anything discernible in terms of uh, the defense that you felt was noteworthy when y'all were out there on Saturday? Well, they, they had a few moments here and there. It's not like they've just been getting run over completely all the time <laughs> when we have had open practices. Um, but there's certainly, you know, still concerns uh, with the with the run defense, I think, in particular. Um, there's moments this spring when the offensive line seems to take over um, and, and Caleb and Josh have some pretty big holes that they're able to run through. Um, but there's also been some moments when the defense on Saturday was able to create a little bit of pressure um, and, you know, affect Garrett, Cor Garrett Nussmeyer in a few plays. Um, you know, got after Ricky Collins a little bit when uh, they kind of left in the first team, uh, or not necessarily the first team, but some of those rotational players on the defensive line. And, um, you know, right at the end of practice on Saturday, kind of forced what would have been a three and out, brought some pressure. 
And, and one way they've been doing that is, you know, we were able to get a glimpse of their third down packages uh, on Saturday and actually, you know, having all on the field at one time, you know, Paris Sand and Hale Perkins and Braden Swinson and Deshaun Womack and using Paris and Braden Swinson, like kind of rushing inside on that third down package um, is something that, you know, and, and Harold on the edge, which I think people will kind of be music to their ears. Um, we, we did get a glimpse of that. And so that, that's been discernible to this point. Any Deshaun Womack buzz, obviously a five-star player who played sparingly as a freshman, but hopefully looking for a jump here in year two. A little bit, you know, he's getting a lot more reps than he did at this time last year. He looks a little bit more comfortable in the defense than he did. Obviously, you know, this time last year, what am I saying? He wasn't even really fully practicing because he was had, had off-season surgery. Um, but even, like, compared to spring, uh, fall camp last year, you know, just sort of seems to be like he's grown into his body a little bit more. Um, there was times last year in fall camp when he was getting flung around like a rag doll uh, by Emory Jones and Will Campbell just because he – was still kind of, needing, kind of needing to work on his technique, and he didn't have the size in his frame just yet. And that seems to be kind of coming along. You know, Braden Swinson's still probably going to you know, be that starter at that sort of smaller defensive end spot, um, which is kind of where the Jacks used to be. Um, but Deshaun is kind of right there, and he's been in the rotation quite a bit. Let's switch back to the offense here. A couple more minutes of your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, Kyron Lacey is a guy that Brian Kelly talked about on Saturday. Uh, are you prepared to see him be this team's leading receiver? Yes, I, I, I am at this point, certainly. I uh, Kyron has had a, been probably the most impressive player on the field this spring. Um, he is the one who, when like you're talking about highlight plays from practice, it's usually he's the one who's usually made them uh, to this point. Um, haven't noticed any drops from him, which was obviously kind of the concern uh, more early last year and, and during his first season at LSU. He's just been consistent, play after play. Um, he's kind of the guy that they seem to go to when they need a play. Um, he's really, really standing out and looks like a kind of, you know, when he came, when he came back this season, you wanted to see him try to make that leap to be wide receiver one and try to emulate what Malik and Brian Thomas did last year in some ways and kind of, you know, make that jump and assert himself. And he truly has to this point. He's been kind of, as Brian Kelly said, set the standard for everybody else. Um, he's been incredibly consistent, um, in his practice habits, uh, in terms of like improving his practice habits has really paid off and, and influenced his game. And, you know, when Brian Kelly is saying in the spring he's going to have a breakout season, you know, we'll have to see how it all looks as it plays out. But I think it's just really encouraging for what they expect of him going into this year. Who's next? Chris Hilton would probably be next right after Lacey. He's had a consistent spring as well from what, everything we've heard. He's healthy, you know, uh, for the first time kind of in a, in a while. Like, whereas, you know, last year he was healthier than he had been the first two seasons of his career. And he's just continued to kind of be healthy. Um, he's making plays. He's fast, obviously, able to finally kind of use all those traits that look so promising coming out of high school. It seems like he's really putting them together. Um, he's had a strong spring, and especially as Davion Thomas and C.J. Daniels continue to learn the offense, Kyron and Chris, are, you know, that's, that they C.J. and Davion haven't necessarily been, like, standout players because they are still learning that offense. But like Joe Sloan said last week, come fall camp, he expects them to maybe be bigger pieces of what they're doing. We're already seeing them getting into the, get into the rotation a little bit more on Saturday compared to where they were a few weeks ago. Um, but in terms of like who's number two right now, I'd say Chris Hilton. You know, Scott Rabelais didn't think the spring game's very important. He's taking his annual jaunt over to Augusta. Is he bringing you anything <laughs> back from the merchandise shop? Uh, I don't think he is this year, but that's because my in-laws are going. Ah. And so they already asked me if I, what my shirt size is. So <laughs> um, I think that I might be getting a shirt or two. Yeah. Excellent to hear. Well, uh, we'll see you up there in Tiger Stadium uh, on Saturday. Thanks for uh, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the time, y'all. Have a good one. He's Wilson Alexander, LSU beat reporter for the Advocates. You know Rabelais is going to be in Augusta spring game. Who cares? We're not dealing with that. He's going to be be at the Masters, so we'll probably check in with Scott on Thursday or Friday uh, from Georgia, but he always enjoys his time there, and sometimes we'll bring you back something if you ask. I figure Wilson may have, but he's got tons of people going to the Masters. doesn't need to ask uh, Scott Rabelais for anything, so we appreciate a little bit of time there uh, from Wilson. Our Monday show is brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. We'll take our final time out. We will come back, play some take it or leave it, and get on down the road. It is the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet, ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sportsbook of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity, getting out on the links, and out to the ballpark, there's no better time to be a sports fan than right now. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sportsbook bet. 
All you got to do is place a bet on a game tonight. There's a pretty big one tonight. You can place a bet on that one. You will get $100 immediately deposited into your account that you can bet freely. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In partnership with LaBerge Lake Charles, terms and conditions apply. See app for details. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered. Moscona inviting you to join us for Monday's AFR, presented by Relief Windows. Media gets full access to LSU's scrimmage. We'll have a full recap on Monday's AFR. 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Winding down here on a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. Hope your work week is off to a good start. National title game tonight. I gave you my pick a little bit earlier. I like the Yukon Huskies, and I like to lay the seven points, six and a half points, wherever you're seeing it. I would lay it because I just think Yukon is too tough to deal with. They're playing too well. They're too well prepared. I think Purdue is really good, and if there's one team that I had to put on the floor to beat them, it would probably be Purdue, but I'm still not going to pick them, so I've got UConn uh, tonight in that one. Uh, very excited for tomorrow's show as well. Glenn West talking some Tigers. We'll get you ready for LSU midweek baseball uh, as well. Sharif Ishak here talking Saints and Pels. We'll react to the national final. LSU spring football is still rolling, so lots and lots to get to on tomorrow's show as well. But there's one more order of business for today's show, we'll get on down the road after a little take it or leave it. All righty, Hunt. Take it or leave it time for the first one. 
So, Diddy McCarthy made eight birdies on the back nine yesterday to force a playoff with Akshay Batia. You won't make eight birdies in 2024. <laughs> take it or leave it. That's not very nice. Um, I'll take it. I'm probably not going to make eight birdies um, in, in 2024. I don't, let's see, how many rounds have I played? I think I've played two rounds this year. That's more than one. me. Two more uh, than me. And I think I've only made, i am probably only made one or two birdies. I don't know that there's six more in my future. Figure I play about eight or ten times a year. That's about a birdie around. Probably not going to happen at that point. So, no, I think Denny McCarthy made more birdies on the back nine yesterday than I'm going to make in the entire calendar year. He did, however, get into that playoff and completely lay the sod over a 60-degree wedge and hit it in the water, and Batia was able to win. And by Akshay Batia winning uh, yesterday's tournament, he's now in the Masters this week, so that's a pretty cool deal for him. But McCarthy, I was watching that yesterday. Eight birdies in the back nine is just insane. Uh, and then for him not to win, that's a huge uh, huge bummer. But, yeah, I appreciate you taking a shot at my golf game there. That was, uh, that was very nice. Thank well, you. Well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, that's more than I ever would have made. So, okay. Next one. The moving screen call that sent Iowa to the final to the finals on Friday against UConn. You taking that or leaving it? I'm taking it. Um, really? I don't, I, I don't know how you could – I hate the argument that, well, you can't make that call at the end of the game. You can make it earlier, but you can't – why? That, it's a foul. I mean, it's very clearly a moving screen. I mean, just – the definition of sliding yeah, by the book, over. By the book to, it is. Yeah, and, and that would have created the separation to get a shot up. You cannot create a game-winning shot attempt in the Final Four with an illegal play. I, that is That was obvious to me. It's not what we want. We would rather see the shot go up and see yeah. if they make it or miss it. That's a more interesting and satisfying ending to the game than the official blowing the whistle and pointing the other way. But it's a moving screen. Like You, you have to make that call. And I, I get that people don't like it because they think that they were trying to get Iowa in the final and all this stuff. I'm not buying into any of that whatsoever. There was a clear moving screen committed. They called the foul. We're going the other way. I just, I don't, I can't, I can't see an argument the other way. I don't have an argument because it is against the book. My only thing is, do not call that in that moment, man. We trying to play ball. Well, what, so, what, what, so what? What if they foul the shooter? Are we gonna call that? Oh yeah, that's a little. I'll give you that. But a moving screen is just. Cause you know when you it's illegal. You're, you're creating illegal. a spot. Are we gonna call over the back on it's the tip end rebound? It's just hard like to. It's hard to. So we, if we can't call it with seven seconds left, can we call it with eighteen seconds left? Can we call I, it I can with, take nine, that. with with sixty? So like, where's the cutoff? I can't. I can't. The I can't only get them. problem is just how much gambling is incorporated. So when you see a call like nah. that, it's like, what's really going on? That's but, Jimmy's yeah, fault. You know, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Jimmy Yacht. Shout out Jimmy Yacht. <laughs> All right, next take it or leave it. A 9:20 Eastern tip-off time for the national title game, which is tonight. Take it or leave it. I, I gotta leave this. Please leave. It. You're talking about UConn fans in Connecticut. It, with, it's a, a 9:20 tip time. That's gonna be nearly midnight, midnight yeah. by the time it's over. I just, I realize we got a four time zones to cater to here, yeah. and we're at 9:20, 8:20, 7:20, and we're only at 6:20 out west. But I, I think this has got to be moved up to 820 Eastern. Like, that's more reasonable. I'm sorry that it's 520 out West. You got to get off work and get home pretty quick. Like, I, I apologize there, but you live out West. Sorry. We, we yeah. got to we gotta get things rolling. I don't need – you shouldn't have to stay up until midnight. I guess that's the same thing we do for football in those Monday night title games, and you just deal with it. Um, but it's just that's, – that's really late. Like, 820, it's fine for us. Like, but at 920 starts, it's brutal for the East Coast. 920 is brutal. That's very brutal. Okay. Last take it or leave it. This one is a little near and dear to my heart because okay. he was my number one pick in fantasy baseball this year. Okay. So Spencer Strider of the Atlanta Braves was diagnosed with a UCL strain. The Braves are in trouble without Strider. Take it or leave it. Um, I'll take it. I think. Look, it's hard for me to to feel like Spencer Strider is going to miss a bunch of time and then be able to ramp it back up in time to be a dominant ace come playoff time. Like. Maybe he's not destined right for Tommy John surgery, and this is not as severe as a tear of the UCL, but, like, it just doesn't feel good. When you've got a power pitcher, and he is the very definition of a power pitcher, who's got a, a problem with his elbow, it just feels like that's going to take a long time for him to be the guy that he's supposed to be. And you look at, at the Dodgers, who are just such a machine 
uh, over there in L.A., although the Cubs did take two out of three this weekend against them. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, you put feel that like, in there. Yeah, you got, got to. Uh, but, you feel like you need to have him and for the Braves to be without him for a long time. Like, they're still going to be okay because the Mets are, are awful. I don't love the Marlins team. The Phillies are pretty good, um, but the Nationals are terrible. Like, their division's not incredible. They ought to be able to handle themselves. Um, but it's just in terms of getting to the playoffs and not having your ace and then Max Fried's not pitching worth a flip either. Like, that's a problem for Atlanta. I think that's a that's a big deal. Like, the Cubs don't have their ace for a little while, but he he strained his hamstring. Like, he just needs to get healthy and, and Justin Steele be back and ready to go. You talk about the UCL with a guy who throws that hard. That's it's terrible not injury. Good. Not good. Justin Verlander had a lot to say about uh, the, the rash of UCL injuries uh, in his press conference today that was – was pretty interesting and he's talking about how every guy is throwing as hard as they possibly can on every pitch and it's just it's not a natural thing for the human body so we'll see but not good news for the atlanta braves that'll do it for today's show i'll do it for take it or leave it go back to the top of the show we we're talking sec uh, lsu baseball for the first 30 minutes of the show i talked about the pitching not great talked about the hitting not great talked about where they sit in the standings not great and i said i just don't know that it's going to get a lot better um i hope i'm dead wrong and I hope that starts on Friday in Knoxville. But I just, the way I'm looking at this and, and, and seeing this team perform and, and the, the teams left on their schedule, I do not like their odds of making the NCAA tournament. And that's really difficult to say and something that shocks me, quite frankly, to say. But if you want to hear my entire thoughts on that, go back to the first 30 minutes of the show. Brian Kelly met with the media on Saturday. We talked some run game uh, with the Brian Kelly sound at 1.30 from DJ Chester to Caleb Jackson to Trey Holly and all that's going on in that situation. So you can catch that. Uh, on demand or at Hunt on LSU on YouTube. Uh, Jordan and I chopped up the Zion Williamson situation at 145 and what that means for the Pels. Calipari leaving Kentucky for Fayetteville. I talked about that at the top of hour number two. Preview the national championship game and then Wilson Alexander on LSU football as well. If you missed any of that, catch it on demand. 104.5 ESPN.com is on demand tab. Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google, wherever you find your sound and as well as YouTube. Matt's about to drive you home on After Further Review. Hope the rest of your Monday is a great one. We're back tomorrow, same time, same place. On the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Hey, fellas, it's Sporty Rush inviting you to get your hair cut where me and my boys get our hair cut, Sport Clips. Sport Clips specializes in hair care for men and boys in a sports-themed environment with guy smart styles. Sport Clips is known for their MVP treatment, a precision haircut, massaging shampoo, the hot towel, and relaxing neck and shoulder massage every time. Now six locations in Baton Rouge, including my hometown of Central, Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. Truck season has been extended at Supreme Chevrolet Gonzalez and Supreme Chevrolet West Plaquemine, where you can expect more Supreme savings on our huge selection of new Chevy Silverados. Save big with super low financing. Save big with huge.